Hello, everybody. It is Trustee's Vintage Live Sale on, yes, January 7th, not January 6th. I have no ability to use a calendar. So sorry for all the confusion that might have been out there. I tried to catch some of my posts, but um, messed up the theme a little bit because until today, I thought Thursday was the 6th. So I'm like, hey, it's January 6th. I'm going to do a live sale on the 6th. Let's do a theme of everything's going to be under six bucks. And then the Huckster Helper pointed out that today was the 7th. So we're going to keep the theme to everything's under six bucks, but now the theme makes no sense because today is the seventh. But you know what? It's just a continuation of 2020. So we'll just rack it up to that. Someday things will get straightened out. Uh, thanks everybody for joining in, signing in uh, early. I actually just hit the top of the hour. So hello, Angela. I was actually just digging into your uh, Instagram account because I wanted to make a note of the live sales that were coming up. So thank you very much for doing that. Anybody who is not following Angela Marksberry, her email or her uh, Instagram is a Marksberry, and that's how you spell Marksberry. Uh, she puts a lot of effort into posting a weekly calendar. And uh, thank you very much for including Trusty Huxter Mercantile. So we've got, I'm on the schedule. And then later tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern is this overstuffed house. And I will um, reiterate some of the sales for tomorrow uh, later as I wrap things up. But I was just in your Instagram checking out um, what the posts were. I will make a side comment, uh, Angela. I believe, believe you have the wrong um, time for Real Nifty Vintage. Um, he had been at... 8 p.m. Eastern, and it, now it appears that he's moving to 7.30 p.m. Eastern, and I think you moved him the other way. I think the, the way I read the schedule, it looked like you might have him at 9 p.m. Uh, tomorrow night. I believe he is at uh, 7.30. I looked on his page really quickly, and I think that's what I saw, so we may, not, may need to verify that, but um, it's still great that you're doing it because we can all still hunt and figure it out for ourselves. So again, hello, Angela. And we've got Melody and Melody messing with her head, talking to Halam across the across the living room, I'm assuming. Uh, so thanks, welcome both of you uh, into the chat. And Katie is here from Vintage and Vinyl. Uh, Katie is another one who puts a lot of time and effort uh, for the goodness of other people. She's much better person than I am. Uh, that is uh, posting, she usually does the calendar by day. So if you follow Vintage and Vinyl uh, on Instagram, uh, in her stories, she will post the uh, sales that are happening and events that are happening at that individual day. So if you're not a planner or a week, you know, you want to do things a week out or you're like me and you can't read the calendar, uh, Katie is also a good one to follow for daily updates. So thanks again, Katie, and thanks for joining. We've got, uh, why did I just jump so far? Where to go? Uh, we've got, how did I jump that far? Um, Okay, so we got Blue Flamingo Mercantiles. We've got uh, Lori from Florida, who, based on my last live event, discovered she was related to uh, KCATX. Um, and I felt really stupid for not knowing that. But regardless, uh, welcome, uh, Lori. Belinda's uh, joining us again. Diana from Little Vintage Me 64 is joining us again. Uh, Diane Carter, welcome, Diane. We've got our New Zealand contingent uh, in the form of Soul Nate. Hey, Nate, thanks for joining us. Uh, Nettie has come back. Uh, oh, look at Nettie's little pug. Louie's going to get jealous. Um, the uh, Norma Jean plus one. Hey, uh, uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Jeannie. Annette has uh, come back. And uh, Annette actually was posting, I think she posted one of my old YouTube videos. She is in, I guess, I don't know if you're in Southern Illinois or Indiana, but you mentioned you were not too far away from the Effingham stops that I included uh, in that video. So I had not recognized that uh, previously. Michelle at Mermaid Cove, hadn't seen you in a while. Welcome back, Michelle, glad to have you back. Uh, we've got the end, as if you're following in the chat, for those of you who have been longer standing uh, viewers of the video, the Huckster Helper is back in the house. She is in the room. She will be helping me this evening, uh, handling, handing, uh, all the items, clearing all the items. She will be doing the updates in the chat of who gets the uh, to claim the items. And um, so watch the chat and then she will let me know so I can announce them verbally. Uh, so for those, most of the names I'm seeing come across, a couple new ones. Hey, Rebecca, welcome back. Um, for uh, Niche Lady, hey, Danny, thanks so much for coming back. Jamie's here. Um, Dawn Shankla, oh, for, we got, since we got Dawn, I'm using my... Uh, pen that was actually a gift from a uh, Dawn and the Just One More Dachshund Rescue, uh, courtesy of the Naked Whittler. 
which you know just re needs to have a, a prize just for the best company name ever. Uh, so the Naked Whittler made this out of a Jack Daniels um, barrel. So that is my pen for this evening. So I'm very happy to be using that and happy to see Dawn uh, joining us again. Uh, so again, uh, jump to anybody who might be new this evening. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Vinny. Uh, hey, Judy. The uh, worked pretty much the same way as most of the other live sales that are going on. The biggest difference is I just don't do auctions. So just be aware when I give an item, I will give a price. And that is the price that it sells for. So I will be working in the first to claim format. Uh, so in general, what you just need to do is I'll show you the item. I will give you the price. I will then announce the item number. If you're the first person that the Huckster Helper sees in the chat, uh, giving that number, you will then claim that item. Things will be a little bit simpler tonight because based on the theme, everything is going to be under $6. And unlike what I've ever done in the past, what we're doing is grouping the sales by their dollar amounts. So it'll be kind of like a really weird version of the uh, bargain bin. So everything I show you first will be, I think I've got nine items that are $6. Then I've got like 15 items that are $5, 10 items that are $4, 10 that are three and 10 that are two. So we don't technically have a bargain bin tonight, but at the end of the sale will be all the $2 items and uh, um, they will all be two bucks. So uh, again, just make sure you're watching in the chat. Uh, make sure you're putting the number in the chat, not the comments. Again, most of you, I think we recognize, but if you've got you know, some newbies, if you are not seeing comments from Diane Carter, Vintage Vinny, Blue Flamingo Mercantile, um, Annette Fain, you are not in the chat. So you need to be in the chat, not in the comments. And it's better to be in the live chat instead of the top chat. So if at any point you are watching this and you see numbers start coming into the chat and you haven't heard me say the number, you're buffering. So just refresh your screen, bounce out of YouTube, bring come back in. Uh, it'll help you catch, catch things up. And, you know, against what a lot of people think, you don't have to have super fast internet. If you're just good about refreshing, you have just as good of a chance as anybody else. And I do have a couple of items this evening that I do have multiples of. So we'll be able to get the first couple people uh, will be able to claim the item. So uh, pretty much everything else is relatively straightforward. Uh, again, thanks so much for all the people joining and coming back. I apologize if I missed people. Uh, I think I just saw a name I did not recognize, uh, Debbie Vitale. So uh, thank you, Debbie, for joining. Welcome back, Mama J. Um, Fatbird Fines is in the house and Thrift Stephanie at Thrifting Adventures. Uh, Stephanie's sales are, it's weird because I'm at the end of the week. It's harder for me to promote things uh, that have already happened, but uh, definitely follow Stephanie. She does sales on Tuesdays. And if I remember correctly, I think I saw her on uh, her page. I wanna say this coming Tuesday, she's doing a joint sale with Plus One Thrifting. Um, which is Norma Jean's daughter. So, you know, it's all just a big family affair around here. So definitely check out Stephanie. That's thrifting. I think on Instagram, it's thrifting.adventures. And on YouTube, I think it's just like it is here, thrifting adventures. Uh, so you can definitely catch her out. Vintage Vinny does his sales, I believe, on Saturdays. So he's another fun one. Definitely you want to check out. And anybody that's in the chat, if I missed uh, announcing you, particularly if you've got a sale, just drop a note. You know, say when your sales are. I have no, I have no problem with people promoting their own activities. Um, so to go ahead and put a chat in there and let people know, you know, if they're if you like live sales, you got a lot to pick from. So tonight there is one ex one more sale after this. We've got for if you're a night owl or you're on the west coast, uh, we've got an, a, a sale tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern. That is this overstuffed house. And then one, two, three, four, five sales that are posted on Angela Marksbury's calendar um, that will be happening tomorrow. So doggone vintage, doggone happy vintage happens at 3 p.m. Eastern. Niche lady, that's Danny. I think I just said hi to her. So yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah, niche lady. There you go. She's even putting in there. So yes, okay. It screws me up when people put things in specific. I have to do math. Uh, so yes, the so niche lady is 4 p.m. Eastern. She's also on Angela's calendar. Crafty Jackie is at 6 p.m. Um, Eastern. Real Nifty Vintage, that's Jeffrey, as well as uh, he co-does. If you don't follow Jeffrey, you should. Real Nifty Vintage, he does the sales with Barb from Winking Owl Antiques. Uh, so they are at, again, I think the calendar might be mistaken, I believe Jeffrey is at 7.30 Eastern. Uh, and then Fatbird Finds does flipping and sipping at 10 p.m. Eastern. And tomorrow is a fun one. They've got their power hour going on tomorrow night. 
So make sure you check in to Fat Bird Finds at their 10 p.m. Uh, flipping and Zipping this Friday for some special guests and extra activities. They always have a lot of fun. They do sell a few items, but it's not really a main, uh, it's not really purpose of a sale. So they do sell some items, the Fat Bird Five. Uh, so you definitely want to participate in that because I picked up many great things from them. Um, but it's just a fun night to hang out. And this Friday, tomorrow night has a lot of special stuff. So definitely make sure you do not miss that. So we're going to go ahead and get things started. And again, so the way this is going to work, we're going to keep it relatively simple. Uh, I've got quite a bit to go through, but the pricing is very inexpensive. So we're going to see, as you, if you watch me before, you know I'm a talker. So you might see things being hurled at my head from off screen. That'll be the huckster helper telling me to move things along. So she's got, she got an orange in her hand right now. So we're going to get things started. Uh, right out of the gate, uh, first thing, uh, if you've watched some of my sales previously, I had closed down, I had a, a brick and mortar space, I had two, and I closed one of them down, had a whole bunch of inventory that was sitting in the garage, which meant when the Huckster Helper came to uh, visit, there was no, she couldn't park in the garage. And in Chicago in the winter, you want to park in the garage. So we pulled a bunch of stuff. So a lot of these things are tagged from my booth. And what this set is, it is, let me get rid of the mess, the notes here. Um, what this is, they are a set of can koozies. They probably have some age. I don't know if they technically get into the 20 years or older, um, but they are promoting uh, um, cigarettes. They're promoting select lights. So you can see the logo of select lights there. Um, these were weekends. There are four koozies. Two of them are duplicates. I've got two of the armadillo. So we've got the armadillo. Uh, one has a pink top, one has a blue top. But it is armadillo, food and spirits. He is serving a beer. And it, but again, it is tied to the Select Lights cigarette brand. So you've got the weekends armadillo, two of those. You've got a sword, um, I don't know, would he be a swordfish with, with sunglasses on? Yeah, sword swordfish saloon. So you've got the swordfish saloon with the with the uh, cool looking uh, blue uh, swordfish, and then the last one is flamingos bar and grill. So you've got pink flamingos and top hats. So again, they're all just can koozies. I had had them in the booth at three dollars each. As I said, we're starting everything. This is the six dollar section. So you get all four of these for six bucks. So they're half price from what I had them in the booth. Six dollars for the set of four. And you can get that by giving me number 64. 64, six dollars for all of all four of the can cool koozies. All right. Next item is a little uh painted pottery little Asian figure. So you've got uh, the scholar design, you know, he's got the, the, top, the, the, the top knot, the big hat hanging off the back. Um, not sure what he's, if that's a bag hanging off his shoulder. He is bisque on the face. So that is a, um, it's not a high gloss glaze, but you can probably see with the way the light's hitting it, his coat, his hat, and everything else has a really high gloss glaze. It is a red clay pottery. It does have a stamped mark of China, uh, but I don't know if that necessarily means it was made in China because there's a little symbol right before it that I can't tell if that's supposed to be a like a pottery mark or something like that. I do believe this might've been a more um, like a studio produced piece, really couldn't swear to it, uh, but just kind of a cool little Asian figurine. Again, this is a $6 section for $6 for this little dude. $6 for giving me number 39. $6.39 for the Asian figurine. If you watched my um, if you watched my live um, my live video on games, I did that um, over the weekend. I talked about this estate sale that I'd gone into and how it was the way it was structured. They literally were just trying to get rid of things. And so one of the things that got thrown into my basket because it was such a good deal uh, was this. And I wasn't even 100% sure what it was. So when I showed it on the live sale, I was told that this is a food mill. And then uh, Huckster Helper and I were just watching uh, Julie and Julia. Or is it Julia and Julie? 
Julie think, and Julia. Things Julie and Julia, uh, the one about Julia Child. Um, she used one of these. It didn't have the big handle on it, but it is the big. It's the grinder that you put on top of a bowl, and then it's kind of got the little, the little spinner thing. Everyone in the chat seemed to know what this was, except for me. So anyway, so I'm just passing this on. It is in really good condition. I don't know necessarily how old it is. It's got the wooden handle uh, around the aluminum. There doesn't appear to be a maker's mark, or at least not one that we could find. Uh, it is in functional condition. It does turn, uh, looks pretty nice. And I'm selling that as part of the $6 set. So $6 for the food mill, number 41. $6, number 41 for the food mill. All right, next item. I've had this multiple times. This is an item that had been in my booth. Uh, Takahashi just happens to be a brand that I like. Uh, I just like the aesthetics of it. I like a lot of what they've done. They kind of get into that boho look, which is just one of those things that I grew up on. Uh, and so this is a little Takahashi planter. It's a little large to be an air plant you know, holder, although if you have one of those wide air plants, this would work. What's really nice about this one is it's got the slightly footed, you know, the raised foot on it, but it's decorated in three separate locations. So no matter where you put this, you actually do get a design. So it can be in the middle of a table, you know, whatever you want to use it for, it is decorated all the way around. Uh, it has the Takahashi, the original label on there, which shows the San Francisco and then made in Japan. Takahashi was an importer. Uh, this you can see I had in my booth at $8.95, selling it here for six bucks. And you can have it for six bucks by giving me number one, six dollars, number one for the Takashi planter. And it looks like uh, Rebecca Higgins took number 41, which was the, the food mill. So congratulations, uh, Rebecca Higgins, for picking up the food mill. All right, uh, only a few more items in the six dollar section. Uh, this is another item that um, was in my booth, but I'd made the, I made the mistake when I put it in my booth, I put the price tag all the way around the glass. And I think that kind of detracted from what the way it looked. So that might've been why it didn't sell. Regardless, I brought it into the sale and I'm knocking it down to six bucks. So it is a purple glass bud vase. You can see it has the etch to clear uh, uh, design uh, in all on the sides. Again, it has a front cut as well as a rear cut. So it's decorated on both sides. Uh, so this is a bud vase that is seven inches tall from table to top. Um, and it pretty narrow, like probably about an inch and a half, maybe a two inch, maybe an inch, uh, inch and a half opening at the top. So this again is $6, $6 for the purple bud vase by giving me number 40. $6, number 40 for the purple bud vase. Now let me catch up into my chat. Uh, looks like number one, the Takahashi planter went to Nettie. So congratulations, Nettie, for picking that up. And I already announced 41, the food mill went to Rebecca Higgins, or as I just wrote it in my sheet, Rebecca food mill. So we're, we fixed that. And uh, number 40, the purple glass vase went to Annette Fane. So thank you, Annette, for picking that up. All right. Next item is, again, an item that had been in my booth. Uh, we were concerned that the sticker was going to ruin the wood, so we actually took it off and polished it up, and it actually turned out perfectly. Uh, it's just a little wooden shaker-style box. It is not old. Like, this is not a 19th century shaker box, but it's in that style. You can see it's got the overlap wood with the uh, uh, pressed... Um, press nails into it. They're, they're flush on the back and the front. So there's some sort of a rivet that was put in there. And then you've got the one tongue that wraps around the top. It is a gorgeous piece that also has the benefit if you don't like the uh, more primitive look of the bands that are wrapped there, you've got a gold decoration that is both on the side of the box as well as the top of the box. So that if you use it as a riser in a um, vignette, or if you just put it on a shelf, you still get the decoration will be shown even if you can't see the top. So it's just a really pretty piece, part of the $6 collection. So you get the shaker box, shaker style box, $6, by giving me number 42. $6, 42 for the wooden box. 
Next item originally had um, matchbooks in it. And then I had an offer that they wanted the matchbooks, but they didn't want the glass dish. Okay, I'll take a dollar. So uh, this I now have left over is the glass dish. So you've got this small uh, style candy dish, two piece. Uh, the cover has a silver overlay on the uh, flowers. On one side it is like it's the top, but it is on only one side of the top. You can see it's decorations down here. There's nothing on this side. However, there is a silver band all the way around, um, all the way around. So that that's completely around. As I held this up, I just discovered, and this probably happened while it was in storage, there is a tiny, tiny flea bite in the top. I'm not gonna change the price because it was already a good price at $6. So you've got a tiny flea bite there and a tiny flea bite here. Um, you know what, because there's two, two bites, I'm gonna change it. It's going to be $5. Um, so this one moved from the $6 group to the $5 group because it had the couple marks that I hadn't seen before. So $5 for number 93. 93, $5 for the silver overlay candy dish, two pieces. Make a note on that. And Huckster Helper made a note as well. And number 42, the shaker box went to Carol Gatles. So thank you, Carol, for picking that up. Uh, next item was kind of a fun find. Um, this is similar to a piece of a, a business card holder that I had found. It's a style of scrimshaw and it's a paperweight that has a script on the top it says, my tastes are very simple. I only want the very best. And it has kind of an etched design around the, on the top of the sides. And then along the side sides, you've got a mansion, you've got a fancy car, and you've got the best champagne. So you've got kind of an old style. I had the business card holder on Etsy and it was taken down because I used the description of Scrimshaw. And even when I argued with them, like I'm saying it's a style of Scrimshaw, it clearly isn't Scrimshaw because it actually had the maker's mark, you know, the label on it. They're like, no, can't do it, sorry. And so I haven't relisted it yet. That one, when I did the research was like around the 60s and the 70s. This is a very similar style. So I'm assuming this is also somewhere around the 60s to the 70s. So again, so this is just a little simple paperweight. On the bottom, there is a foil label made in Great Britain and they've done it with the abbreviation of GT. Uh, so again, showing a little bit of its age. So made in Great Britain, a uh, little scrimshaw phrase for knowing only the very best, $6 by giving me number 91. $6.91 for only the best paperweight. And then the last item uh, from this set was also in my booth. Uh, this is just a really nice piece that I personally liked. You shouldn't fall in love with your own stuff, but it is something that I really liked. It's a Noritake stoneware piece. It's a mixing bowl. It's a pretty decent weighted mixing bowl. So keep that in mind. I'm shipping outside Chicago. So center of the country, shipping doesn't tend to get too, too expensive, but this is definitely gonna be over a pound by itself, depending on what else you buy. So just keep that in mind. But the, hopefully you'll be able to see it in the, yeah, you can in the camera. The way the uh, glazing was done, it created these dark and light sections around the bowl and on the inside of the bowl. So you can see it's kind of a three color tone of a taupe beige color. It's just a really sharp looking piece. It is the Noritake name, Noritake stoneware. So you're looking at 70s or 80s. It is still... Yeah, this one is still made in made in uh, made in Japan. The the um, the pattern number or pattern style is called Tawny T A W N Y. So anyway, I had it in uh, for eight dollars in my booth, selling it here for six dollars. You can get it by giving me number ninety four, ninety four six dollars for the Noritake um, stoneware bowl. All right, so now we're gonna move into the $5 sections. And Melody is asking for, okay. I fell behind in my own notes. So number 42 went to Carolyn Gatles. And then Melody has a note just for an, did she correct it? Okay, never mind. I was just like trying to catch up because Huckster Helper was helping lay out the next set of items. So these are the $5 items. Um, 
So everything, again, some of these were from my booth. Some of these just you know needed to come in out of storage so that Rockstar Helper could make it into the garage. So this one is a footed uh, pedestal plate. It has the uh, reticulated uh, pierced porcelain uh, edge in great condition. There's no chips, no cracks to this piece. Uh, it does have a label of the brand Wales, W-A-L-E-S. Uh, but it's not the country Wales because then it says underneath it made in Japan. So you have a Wales, uh, China made in Japan piece. You can see how it's attached at the bottom. So there's a, a screw rod that goes from the top plate all the way down to the bottom, holding this together. I originally had it in my booth for six ninety five, selling it here for five bucks. Give me number 23, 23, $5 for the footed plate. All right. Uh, next item is a, another piece of porcelain that I'd had and meant to lift, list on Etsy and thus decided to include it here. Uh, so this is just a really attractive cabinet plate, attractive decorative plate uh, from uh, Erdman Schlignick. Yeah, she's looking at me because I said it wrong. Um, but anyway, it's it does have the original label, but it also has from the antique shop that it originally came from. Uh, information showing that that dip mark dates from 1902 to 1938. So you've got an antique uh, German porcelain plate. It has a very, very uh, light, kind of almost like an aqua blue. It does, it does have a greenish tone to it, but the green has like a blue overlay. So it's kind of like a bluish green background. And then the flowers themselves are white with a little bit of pink, which is kind of coming in okay on the, on the camera. Um, but you basically just have a decorative uh, cabinet plate. So this again falls in the $5 section, five bucks, and it is number 82. $5, number 82 for the rose plate. All right, next piece is a piece of restaurant wear. Uh, this is from Jackson, China, a Falls Church, Pennsylvania, it appears. Um, it is a, a wide-rimmed cereal bowl, soup bowl, something along those lines. Uh, it's actually, and it is fairly wide. It is nine inches across. It has this burgundy color, reddish color harp design encircling the entire bowl. And then the Jackson China um, stamp on the back. Relatively shallow bowl. So again, it's kind of like a wide soup bowl, wide cereal bowl, uh, not particularly deep of that restaurant where that heavy grade China. So it had been in my booth at seven bucks. I'm selling it here for five. So $5 for the restaurant where with the harp design by giving me number 12. Number 12 for the restaurant where with the harp plate. And the rose plate went to uh, number 82, went to Karen Dondelinger. So once again, I get to send something breakable to San Francisco. So thank you, Karen, for picking that up. All right. Uh, next item is if you watched one of my um, deep dives from a couple of months ago, I had Rebecca from Kitchy and Bitchy on, and she talked about swizzle sticks. And so this ended up being a, a set of swizzle sticks that I picked up at that same estate sale. I bought them as a set. And so I'm just going to sell them as the set. I still have other, uh, I have other swizzle sticks that I've been putting into mystery boxes and doing as grab bags, things like that. But this is the set as I picked them up. So I kept it together. So the, what comes in this one is a pick. You can see the size of the swizzle sticks versus the size of this pick. But the pick is for the Craws Nest in, And then you've got two of the um, Trade Winds Chicago pieces, swizzle sticks. So they've got the big uh, sailing ship at the top and then uh, an anchor type spike at the bottom. You then have a Seagram seven in the lamp, uh, the lamp style. That is a like a dark royal blue. You've got a bowling themed swizzle stick, which does not appear to have a location on it. It's just the crossed pins and the bowling ball. You've got a palm tree uh, tiki style dude, and that is from Trade Winds Chicago as well. You've got the little tiki dude up at the top, and you've got the palm tree 
at the bottom. So I actually, I don't know which way it's supposed to go. And then you also have, this is a set, which I thought was pretty cool. That's why I wanted to make sure I kept it together. This is from Seagram's Golden Gin. And the only thing I can assume is they are numbered, but they're, they're all the same style, but they're all numbered one, two, three, and four. So I don't know if this was designed, you would then each have, like you'd get your swizzle stick, but then when you grabbed your drink, you knew you were number two. So that was how you kept, ta kept track of your drink all night long. That's my, that's a guess. So anyway, they're all the, the same design. They've got Sing Seagram's in like a rope script going up the uh, sides. And then it's actually kind of more like a spoon uh, as opposed to a spike or just a blunt end. So this actually has a little bit of a bowl. There's a tiny spoon there. So again, we're in the $5 section. You get the four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 uh, swizzle sticks, nine swizzle sticks plus the little pick is $5. And you get that by giving me number 89. Set of swizzle sticks, $5, number 89. And it looks like, uh, no, we're good. All right, next piece, if you're familiar, this comes up quite a bit in the Chicago area. I don't know if it's, you know, how, how familiar people are outside of there. Um, the Berggren name. If you like vintage Scandinavian design, there's a very high chance you like Berggren, you just don't know the name, but this is the stuff that they do. Usually it is marked or signed in some way. This one has it very, very small at the very bottom, 1963 Berggren Trainer Corporation. This is one of the earlier pieces. Uh, this is when they lived, when they were in Libertyville, Illinois. Again, it's, that's why it's, it's local. Um, but as they became more popular, the Berggren name would get bigger. And so suddenly it was like almost part of the design. I have a plate that has this exact same design, the exact same Varsagot uh, on the bottom, but it was much later and it actually had Berggren written along the leaf in a yellow and it, made, it was very obvious it was a Berggren piece. So they became a name. This is one of the earlier ones. Uh, this one I never ended up getting into the booth. Uh, so I'm just selling it here for five bucks. So $5 for the Berggren Varsagot uh, Scandinavian plate design by giving me number 74. Number 74, $5 for the trivet. Um, and it looks like the swizzle sticks, number 89, also went to Karen Dondelinger. So thank you very much uh, for picking those up, Karen. Something that won't break heading to California, so that's good. And um, what was the number I just gave you on the bird? 74, we'll see who that went to. All right, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let, there was a couple people, so I'm gonna let the Huckster Helper decide who got that one. All right, the next one, again, goes back to that estate sale. I picked up a lot of very interesting items. This one I'm gonna, puts us back into the 80s or the 90s. They are a series of button, yike. They're a series of button covers. Let me take this one off since it wants to come off anyway. There's one large one, and it's this style. So it's got the little slot where you would put your coat button, you know, into that recessed area and then slide this down and you would have this decorative puzzle pieces. And you can see they've been lacquered onto here. You've got one large button that's got this button cover with the puzzle pieces and then four smaller ones. They're still fairly large, but they're not as large as the largest one. So like this one might be for a jacket where this one might be for a, a blouse or a shirt or something. Um, they all do match. They're not identical. Uh, I can't tell you if these were mass produced or if this was a uh, project. I do not see any markings on the brass cover, um, but these are obviously puzzle pieces and they were lacquered. So it kind of makes it look like it might've been a DIY thing. I'm not really sure. Thought they were kind of cool, very different, and still something that even though they're probably from the 90s, definitely something you could have uh, today and would be a very good conversation piece. So again, we're still in the $5 section and you can give me $5 for the button covers by giving me number two. $5, number two for the button covers. All right, and I was on the wrong screen, so I need to jump back over. I apologize if anyone's trying to talk to me. I'll make sure the Huckster Helper shouts out that if somebody's got a question, I'll answer it. Um, but so it's great to have somebody helping me clear the table again. So, so nice. All right, uh, the next piece is another piece. This one actually was in my booth. 
had at my booth for $7.95. It's a small planter, again, a little large to hold uh, air plants, but if you, you know, strung a whole bunch of them together, you have a pretty nice size uh, desktop uh, planter. It's in great condition. It is not, uh, there does not appear to be any maker's mark on it. The only thing you get is the number 420 that's on that side. And uh, this one is an incised mark that says USA. And I do not necessarily recognize that script or those numbers. I'm sure some people will recognize what those numbers mean. But we're in, a, in the planter world, I have a feeling it might mean something different. So it's an ivory color. On the inside, it's in, in pretty good condition. I don't really see any crazing. Uh, no, really don't see much crazing on the inside, but you do see crazing on the bottom. So be aware, there might be some crazing on the inside. Uh, so it, you, you're taking a little bit of a risk if you actually wanted to use this for uh, moist soil, uh, if there's any, if that crazing is too bad, but I really only see it on the outside. So again, we're still in the $5 section. Um, and so the pottery planter, $5, you can get by giving me number 49, $5, number 49 for the 420 plat planter, which I've already seen many, I see the comments, people are commenting on it. Um, ivory planter number 49. All right. Uh, next piece um, <laughs> is somewhat embarrassing. The next piece I actually found underneath the seat of my car, um, literally in driving at one point, and I started hearing something rattling. I'm like, what, what would that be? It was a piece of glass that had fallen out of a bag or something that I put behind my seat, and I had taken the bag away, but this must have tipped out of it and then kind of disappeared underneath the darkness of my seat. It is a smoke-colored glass. It kind of has a greenish gray tint to it, but I would say it's gray. Um, and I would say the color that's showing up on the screen is pretty pretty representative of what, what color it is. Um, it has a the star uh, design at the bottom. It is an impressed um, a molded glass. There's a fairly heavy seam line here. Um, and a slight seam line along the handle. So it feels like they might've tried to polish the handle down a little bit, but they really didn't do anything with this little tiny piece between the handle and the top. So you definitely can tell it's a molded piece. They did clean up though the bottom. So the bottom's in really nice clean condition, no heavy seam. So it was a, it was a moderately good piece of glass at the time it was made. I'm not 100% sure what this would have been used for, it definitely wouldn't have had a lid because it has that scallop design to it. And the scallop is not continued on the edge. So this I believe is designed to be open, but it's really shallow to be an open sugar bowl. So I don't know if this would have been possibly a cereal bowl or a soup bowl, like if this was part of a, a dinner service. I just think, again, this would be great. This you could put a couple of small air plants in, or this is one of those things you put next to the door, your keys go into it. You know, it's just a great, nice heavy glass like this is going to take some de definitely take some abuse if you're throwing stuff into it just a really nice piece and it's only five bucks so five dollars for the smoked glass double handled dish five dollars by giving me number 69 five dollars 69 for the double handed glass dish all right so number 49 the ivory planter went to belinda carroll so thank you belinda for picking that up and the puzzle button uh, covers went to Melody. So congratulations, Melody, for picking that up. The Bergren Trivet went to Jamie at Mid-Century uh, Wasted. Uh, so thank you for picking that up. Sorry, I fell a little bit behind there in the chat. So, all right, next item. Um, this is one, again, I had... I, this I found in a box. It wasn't rolling underneath my seat. It was just a piece that if I'd known I had it earlier, I would have been shipping it off to Karen Dondelinger. So Karen, be aware. Uh, if you need more Hard Rock Hurricane glasses, I actually found another one. So this is uh, identical to some of the ones I've sold before. It's the standard Hard Rock Hurricane. This is not one of the city um, type, so there's no name under here. So this is a generic uh, Hard Rock Hurricane glass, but it does have the recipe for the hurricane on the on the back. So it's not a city piece, it's just the standard hurricane piece and I'm selling it for five bucks. So $5 for this one and it's number 70. 
five dollars number 70 for the hard rock uh hurricane mug or hurricane glass all right next piece as you know i do a lot with porcelain uh, this was something that had been in my um had been in my booth just a small little uh dresser tray uh pin tray you know key tray very shallow beautiful porcelain design uh design with a pink rose in the center the gold going all the way around the center rectangle as well as along the edge both handles are in really good condition uh you can kind of see there there's a sage green accent that goes on just the handles so it kind of added a green uh, accent to it. Um, but the leaves are not green, they're gold. So they kind of, they really don't have a lot of green in the dish other than those two handles. It is a piece of Noritake from Japan. We've got the open reef. It is hand painted. So it's got the mark right there on the back. I had had it in my booth for $8.95, marked it down to $5. So it's in the $5 bin here by giving me number 51. Five dollars, number fifty-one for the porcelain uh, dresser tray. Um, all right, this one I actually picked up uh, a while back, and I just ended up never listing it. Um, and I just thought this would be a fun one to add here. It is a man and a woman spoon rest. Why you want a man and a woman's spoon rest, I do not know. But it you can see in both her face and his face are concave, convex, no, concave. Um, so it is designed to hold spoons in both of their faces. So, you know, had a rough day, you can pick which person gets smacked in the face with a soft spoon. Um, it is not in perfect condition. It's a DIY piece, a home hobbyist piece, dated 1985 from MK, got the, the initials and the date right there. Uh, and as a home hobby piece, you know, it's, it's just got the plain white glaze on the back, painted on the front. And there's a place right along the edge where the paint has, um, I will say scuffed away because I don't feel a chip. I just feel the rough, the rough pottery underneath it. So I think it either wasn't painted particularly well and it just rubbed off, or maybe it did just chip the paint, but it, it's been smoothed out over the years. Uh, the rest of it's in really good condition. Um, no cracks, no other issues. There's just that tiny piece, which once you lay it down, completely disappears. So again, you know, I don't tend to carry things with damage unless they're unique. This was pretty unique. I thought that, you know, the style made him look like that's like uh, Mary and the Librarian and, you know, Her Professor Harold Hill there. Uh, you know, 1910, I can see him going off to join a barbershop, barbershop quartet. Uh, got the two, the man and the woman, spoon rest, $5 from 1985, $5. You can get it by giving me number six, $5, number six for the man and woman uh, spoon rest. Okay, number 51, the um, pin tray went to Karen Dondelinger. And number 70, the hurricane glass went to uh, for Sandy's lilacs. So thank you, Sandy, for picking that up. All right, another piece I had in the booth. Um, these are, I had been putting uh, textiles in the drawer of my current booth. And basically what I was discovering is people were not opening the drawer even after I put the signage on there saying there was stuff in there. Um, so things weren't selling. So I figured, you know, took them out. We were having to re-tag everything. So a lot of the stuff that I'm selling is stuff that I had tagged with my old tags. And instead of changing to the new tags, I'm just selling it here. So these are crocheted uh, pot holders, a pair of them. I'm going to sell these as a pair. You can see it's got the dimensional, um, like yellow and white rose, you know, crocheted in the middle. Because it's dimensional, it's still relatively flat, but there's a couple layers there. I don't know if it necessarily would still count as a trivet, like a hot pad to set things on, or if it's designed more like to grab things out of the oven. Regardless, it's got the white um, back and then the white front with the uh, green and yellow. And then you've got a little bit of a, a decorative trim that goes around in both of them. And both of them still have the little hook to hang them on are still in good condition. They've not been ripped open, so they can still be hung on your stove, on your wall, whatever you would like to do with them. 
I'm doing the pair of these for five bucks. And so $5 for the two potholders you get for giving me number 52. $5, number 52 for the pair of potholders. And it looks like number six, the spoon rest went to Carol Gatles. So thanks, uh, Carol, for picking those up, that up. And there we go. All right, the next item I originally was holding on to because I wanted to find a stopper to go into it. You guys are pretty creative. You guys are pretty resourceful. You guys can find a stopper for this because it's one of these cases I didn't want to keep holding on to them and have them get damaged. It is a little stoneware lion bank. So you've got the face of the lion. It sits like this, so it sits flat here. So you've got this angled face, which is where the lion's face is. And then in the back is where the slot for the bank is. So it's a fairly large hole, which is why when I was looking for what I had, I did not have anything large enough for this. I think this would require you to actually get a, you know, a two inch, one of those more rubber stoppers, you know, that stretch and fit in there. You use a modern one. I just decided, you know what? I don't have it. I don't have the time to find one and I will just sell him at a good price. So he's absolutely adorable. He's in great condition. He's just missing his stopper. So if you don't want to use him as a bank, you're, you're set. If you want to use him for a bank, I think he'd make an awesome bank. You just have to figure out what to put on the bottom so the money doesn't fall out. So you've got the face uh, of the pottery lion. Got, got the curly Q hair is uh, stenciled in the back. Very cool. Uh, he's bisque on the front, more of a uh, little bit more of a glay uh, sheen on the sides. Five dollars for the lion, number eighty-five. Five dollars, number eighty-five for the pottery lion. And looks like uh, the spoon rest. Oh, I said that. That went to Carolyn Gales. All right. Next item is another piece of glass. This is another item I had in my booth for six ninety-five. It is a blown glass. You can see the pontal mark is there on the bottom. Blown glass, blue with an ombre, dark, uh, more of a darker aqua blue at the top, going into a much, much paler, almost white as you work your way around, rose bowl. So it has a very narrow opening and you can see it is ruffled. I don't have any maker's mark. There's no signature. You know, these were produced by many companies, Fenton among them, but I have no guarantee it's Fenton. Uh, but it was very well made with very uniform ruffles into it. Uh, so it's a $5 Rose Bowl, $5 for the ombre blue Rose Bowl by giving me number 92, $5 number 92 for the blue glass Rose Bowl. And it looks like the number 85, the Lion Bank went to Linda Punky. So thank you for picking those up. And the knitted hot pads went to Auntie Christy. So thanks Christy for picking those up. Also shipping to California, but at least those would be relatively lightweight to do so. And Rose Bowl is 92. Um, and it looks like 85. Oh, I said that. Lion Bank went to Linda Punky. All right. Two more items in the $5 uh, package. This one is a twofer. This had been an $8 recipe box that I had in my booth with... Um, the little 70s uh, little dividers. You got brunch, fowl, bread, um, veal, sandwich, salad. Oh, there's multiples for salad. I guess they're really pushing salads. Drinks, desserts, pasta. The colors match the outside. So you've got this like orange and a green. It's alternating. It looks like, oh, I guess they're all, or all orange and green. So you've got the orange and green that kind of matches the colors that are on the recipe box itself. So this used to be in my booth for $8 by itself. And then I also had for another $5, this box of where uh, here's what's cooking, which is the vintage recipe cards themselves. So you've got the recipe cards and this is the style of the single recipe card. Uh, but this is the exact same design that I have for my recipe cards uh, growing up that were doubles. So I guess this was just a common theme with that stove. The box doesn't have a name or a maker or anything on it. So I don't really know. Oh, no, wait, it does. So something at the bottom. Oh, it's Current. It's from Current. Uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado, and no zip code. 
but I can't imagine these are pre-1963, but maybe they are. Um, so anyway, you get what would have been the $8 uh, recipe box plus the $5 cards. You get the pair of them for five bucks. So for $5, the recipe box and the recipe cards, $5 for number 80. $5, number 80 for the recipe box and the recipe cards. All right. It looks like number 92, the blue rose bowl went to Auntie Christy. Hey, Tia Fane. Actually, Tia Fane, you need to drop me a note at some point. Um, I want to ship you those uh, seed packets we had talked about. Um, and I don't have your information. So if you drop me a note, I'll make sure you get those. I did run a video. I haven't posted it yet, um, but I'm just going to, I'm certainly not going to test them. So if you want them, you can have them. Uh, so anyway, 92, the Rose Bowl goes to Auntie Christy. So thank you for picking that up. Um, did we have any takers on the double-handed smoke glass bowl? Okay. I want to make sure I didn't miss that one. And then the last item in the $5 uh, item pieces is the finest quality top bar accessory, authentic tartan, the whiskey bottle cover in authentic tartan. So you can give your Irish whiskey a Scottish quilt, I think, or a Scottish kilt. I think they're a little confused, but regardless, you've got the little uh, apron thing at the top, the neck to go around the top of the bottle, you've got the long length, and then it's still in its original vintage packaging, but you can kind of see there's the um, band here would be you'd wrap this around and tie it in the back. You know, so you'd have a little, a little kilt and vest for your, and according to this, for your whiskey bottle. So it says it's made in Scotland by Joylay of Ed Edinburgh, the whiskey bottle cover. Five bucks. So five, $5 to pimp out your whiskey bottle in a vintage kilt uh, design. Five bucks by giving me number 48. Five dollars 48 for the kilt decor. All right, moving on to the next page. So now we're moving into the $4 items. So first item, I've actually sold a couple of these before on Etsy. I've sold them for more than $4, but this one um, I kind of forgot I had and had already deactivated the other ones that I'd sold. So I'm pulling it here. It is a little white ewer and not that little. Let me get the measurement out here. It is seven and a half inches tall, so decent size, but it's a, it's a little pitcher, a little ewer with a gold bamboo design etched up on one side. It has a uh, also gold on the handle, but the back side of it is blank. I've had these in a couple of different sizes. I have had this size before, just a cute little piece. This one just doesn't happen to have any maker's mark on it. Uh, so I'm including this one for four bucks. So it's $4 for the little, uh, the, the little ewer. $4 by giving me number 95. $4.95 for the gold trim tall ewer. And it looks like 48, the wine vest went to Auntie Christie. So congratulations, Auntie Christie, for picking up and decking out your liquor bottle. Uh, next one is an item I had had in my booth. Uh, it's just a little piece of vintage kitchenware. Uh, it's from Knowles utility wear made in the USA. The number on the bottom does say 42-3. I'm not familiar with Knowles, so I don't know if that means it was made in 1942, um, but I'd say based on design, it's entirely possible it was made in the 40s. You've got the orange uh, floral design on both the front and the back. So it's kind of nice. It's got the dimension, the uh, designs on both sides. You can see the little stair step design on the bottom. So just, there's a really nice silhouette to this little piece. It definitely has some age to it and definitely has some crazing. Uh, you can see it pretty easily there, you know, even with the bad lighting. Um, so just be aware, you know, this would probably be more of a, uh, an aesthetic decorative piece, look great up on a shelf, a really nice pop of orange color with the beige glaze. I'd had it in the booth for $6, selling it here for four by giving me number 76. $4, number 76 for the Knowles Utility Bowl. All right, next one, as you know, I uh, did a deep dive with BMOS Mercantile on vintage dominoes. And I found another box of dominoes that I originally planned on putting into my booth. 
Uh, but once I discovered that pieces of the games of the games that I was putting in my booth were disappearing and being stolen, I decided not to put this in my booth. So instead, I'm going to sell it here. So uh, it's a complete set for the double six. You can see the box is completely full. The back of the design of the individual dominoes is just a, like a really nice scripted swirl design. Uh, the pips are white and they are recessed. They do not have a spinner in the middle. So these are just molded, you know, right into this. The box, uh, I don't think said who made it. Well, it's, uh, there's, uh, there's a design. Oh, Hal Halson. I think that was a name she had mentioned. It's just the way it's done. I didn't even realize it. So it's, I think it says H, yeah, it looks like H-A-L dash S-A-N. And I don't think that last thing's a letter. So I think it's just Hal San, uh, number 610 dash H. You can see underneath the diamond, it says made in the USA. So you just got a set of dominoes uh, now being sold for four bucks. Four dollars for the set of dominoes by giving me number 79. $4.79 for the set of dominoes. And the Knowles Utility Bowl, number 76, went to Carolyn Gatles. So thank you, Carol, for picking that up, uh, another, uh, picking up another item. All right, the next one is one of the items I mentioned. I had a few things that I was going to be selling that I had more than one of. This happens to be one of them. This is a uh, Francoma 94XL, the Aztec design cereal bowl so you've got i have two of these so the first two people that claim the number will will be able to take one of these items home um selling it for four dollars it's the traditional uh francoma glaze it's in great condition there's no chips there's no cracks had them in the booth at 4.95 they did not sell so i'm selling them here for four bucks so four dollars for the very well and easily marked Francoma with the 94 XL pattern. So if you like the Francoma China, you can't get much more representative of uh, their design. So $4 for the Francoma by giving me number 90. $4, number 90 for one of the Francoma bowls. If you want more than one, enter the number twice or the first two people we find will both get one of the bowls. So Francoma goes out at, there it is, number 90. And it looks like the dominoes went to Melody. So congratulations, Melody, for picking up the $4 domino set. This is another item going back to the uh, estate sale that I went to that I really all had intended all along to sell here because you guys like stories, you guys like, you know, just something, you know, quirky or special about it. So what this is, is like an old fashioned um, wall plaque. It looks like bronze, but it's just like really a, a cheap, you know, aluminum overlay with a cardboard backing. Um, the, uh, it's a bless this house plaque. There's a little hook on the back, so you'd be able to hold it, hang it. Bless this house, O Lord, we pray. Make it safe by night and day. Bless these walls so firm and stout, keeping want and trouble out. Bless the roof and chimneys tall. Let thy peace lie over all. Bless this door that it may prove ever open to joy and love. Somebody got lazy there at the end. Um, so I'm assuming this is actually supposed to hang on your door just because it's specifically saying this door. So that's cute, nice, I like it. But what made it special is what's on the back. And this is one of those cases, I mean, no, dis I mean, I mean, no disrespect to the family, but it baffles me what this family let go. I bought, uh, I bought baptismal certificates. You know, they were selling their family photos. They were selling things that have these messages on them. And so this is the message. And it's written in this really cool script, which I thought was kind of fun. So this says on the back, this is from Mum Donnie. No, I'm sorry, Mum Winnie. Okay. That does not look like a W, but that's what it must be. So Mum Winnie. I have one hanging on my wall as you come in the front door. So when mom knew you had your new home, she asked me to get one for you. I got it when Tok and I were at Blackpool. So we are now British. I'm sure you will like it. It most certainly comes to you with love from mom. Pity I had not got her to write on the back. So I don't know if mom died or if this was just something shipped overseas. I have no idea. It does have... 
a company name underneath what was attached to it. I'm not sure how these look like this might have been decoupage or something. I have no idea what that name is because I've never seen one of these. I, you're kind of buying it more for that kind of cool story on the back. And it's only four bucks. So the little bless this house plaque, it's only $4 uh, with the little mum and Winnie message on the back. It's $4, number 54. $4.54. And this is super lightweight, by the way. So if it's the only thing you buy, it won't cost much to ship. $4.54 for the wall plaque. And it looks like number 90, the Francoma. It looks like we only sold one. Okay, so we had one Francoma bowl go to Brooke Lagan. Uh, Brooke, let us know if you just want the other one or if anybody else, there's still another Francoma bowl available. Um, but at least one of them goes to Brooke at the archive. All right, I mentioned Takahashi before. I like Takahashi. When I find come across it, I do pick it up. It's got a neat look and it's inexpensive uh, to you know move, pass on and usually light enough weight to ship. So it's another little basket. It again has the Takahashi foil label on it, but this one also has a, taka, a stamp on it, which I have not had too many pieces that are stamped. The stamp says joy and then has a little icon, and then it says San Francisco underneath it. I'm assuming that means this is probably a little bit later than the earlier ones. Like this might be an 80s, 90s one, where some of the others were like 70s and 80s. Uh, doesn't really matter. It's a beautiful little basket. It's got the rattan uh, holder to it uh, that's that's hooked on there. These basket, these little rattan hangers are also really good for biscuit barrels and things like that. Um, but this one is designed, you know, for this basket. I'm assuming original, but I have no way of knowing that. It is designed with this floral motif all the way around. So you've got these pink, tall stemmed florals that have gold trim around them. So it's just a really interesting little piece. You could have just a little, uh, you know, little air plant in there, a small regular plant in there, or again, use this for candy, keys, whatever you want. It's just a small dish. And it's only four bucks. So the Takahashi basket for $4, you get it for number 10. Number 10 gets you the $4 basket with the Takahashi uh, label. And it looks like uh, number 54, the bronze tone wall plaque went to Niche Lady. So we've got something heading to Las Vegas. All right, we got some French in the house. So this is, I've had these before. It is a very small, um, like small in the sense that this is probably like three inches. Yep, three inches. It is a little three inch. It could be a butter packed. Um, it's a little too small to be a coaster, but it is sold when it was made. It does say uh, Limoges on the back, handmade in France. It doesn't have any other maker's mark in it. And Limoges is really more of a region. So this is you know designed to be a touristy item but it was sold and the, all the ones that I have sold with this have always had this little hanger on it. Uh, this one's a little bit bigger than the other ones I've sold, but they've all been the same design. You've got the 18th century uh, dresses uh, and, and wear of the courting couple. This has a really pretty like Tiffany blue trim within the gold overlay, gold trim all the way around. And then the gold tone hanger that allows you to either hang it on the wall or this piece then comes out or you could use it like a little easel. So this again is in the $4 package for a little Limoges uh, wall hanging plate or stand plate, number uh, $4 by giving me number 68. $4.68 for the tiny Limoges plate. All right, and all right. Next item. Uh, for those who uh, join Melody on a lot of the live sales, she's always on the look for green wood-handled kitchen utensils. Sorry, Melody, this one's red. So this is a piece that, again, I had in one of the drawers in my booth, and when I had to take things out to re-tag them with the new system, I just pulled this out because people weren't buying this stuff out of the drawers. So this is one of those pastry presses, mixers, uh, hand press. It has the wood handle on it with a... I would say that's a painted yellow band. That is not the bare wood. It looks like that has been painted and it's kind of a creamy color, almost yellow. Um, it's riveted very nicely in place. It says right on the side, it is made in the USA, A and J dough blender to blend flour with shortening. 
patent number 1486255, and then there's two other patent numbers after that. So pretty. Uh, what I like about this one is it's actually very, very sturdy. Um, you know, you can kind of collapse that down a little bit, but a lot of the ones I've seen, this is almost like a whisk. You can see there's some meat to this. This thing is not collapsing at all. And this is a pretty nice rigid piece um, to be able to do the press. So it has the red handle. It has a little bit of looseness on the handle, but I think that's by design so that you can actually like it moves in your hand, but I couldn't tell you because those are rivets and I don't really know how you would tighten anything if you needed to. So just, you know, be aware there does seem to be a little bit of a give, but I want to say that's by design, but I wouldn't know. But because I don't know, I'm going to sell it for four bucks. So $4 for the little pastry dough blender, $4 by giving me number 55. $4.55 for the uh, blend, the pastry tool. And it looks like number 10, the Takahashi basket went to Sue Golombeski. So thanks Sue for coming back and picking up another item from me. So I appreciate that. Uh, and 68, the Limoges plate went to Auntie Christy. Sorry, Dawn, your internet must not have been fast enough tonight. So, um, Hell, you're still waiting for a shipment from me. I've, and I, I will, uh, you probably all know this by now, particularly if you do live sales, but just be aware the post office really has not recovered. So I still have two shipments from November that have not been uh, delivered yet. So, and then at the same time, I had one of my fastest shipments ever get to California. I have no idea. So just be aware. And uh, Dawn happens to be waiting for a shipment that was shipped December like 16th or 14th or something like that. And as of yesterday, it was in, it, it has moved in Maryland three times, um, but it, it had yet to be delivered as of yesterday. So anyway, all right. The next item is, I thought this was a little quirky. And I thought, again, this is something that um, this group might like because I got good natured flack for doing so much support for dogs. And everyone's like, well, what about the cats? Well, I brought something in for the cat lovers. So it, I don't know how old this is, but it definitely has that older mid-century modern style. I have a feeling it's not particularly old. It is a regular uh, circular mirrored back mirror or silver backed mirror, but it has this little gold tone cat on it. And the cat has rhinestone eyes and yeah, just rhinestone eyes. There's nothing in the collar. Um, oh, and then rhinestones at the bottom. I was gonna thought I saw rhinestones. So you've got the little rhinestone pedestal and the little rhinestones in the eyes. Uh, and you just kind of have this really cool silhouette. It is simply a decorative dish. I don't really know what you could use this for. I don't really think you could put rings or anything over him. He's a little wide to do anything with jewelry. So I think he's just kind of looks cool. Uh, you might be able to put stuff, you know, rings on the side or pin or whatever, like make it a little place for your, you know, rest your jewelry or put something else on there. It's just a cool little piece, nothing particularly special, just something a little bit different. Oh, Dawn's shipment arrived today, excellent. Um, so you've got the little cat uh, cat piece in celebration of receiving the docs and stuff. You've got the little cat item tonight for four bucks by giving me number 20. Four dollars, number 20 for the little cat piece. And number 55, the um, pastry tool went to Blue Flamingo Mercantile. So thank you, Lori, for picking that up. Uh, and the last uh, item in the $4 section is what I believe to be my one and only coaster. So I have one coaster. You know, I always have coasters in my sale. And so this is one that I picked up. It's relatively large, so it wouldn't have to necessarily just be a coaster. Could be a pin tray. Could be a wine coaster. It's, it's a little bit larger than most of the coasters that I carry. It, the dish itself is about four and three quarters inch across, but the platform at the bottom is only three and a quarter. Cause you can see there's kind of a wide rim on this one. I am counting as a coaster though, because I needed a coaster. So this is a pottery company I wasn't familiar with. It's Emerson Creek Pottery from Bedford, Virginia, 2009. So we're not talking about, you know, super duper age here, um, but it's just a really cool iris pattern. It's very simple, cream off-white colored pottery. Uh, perfect condition, no chips, no cracks, no crazing or anything. The bottom is the bisque, so it was never glazed, so you don't have the stilt marks, you don't have anything there. The stamp is going into the bisque. 
but at the edge of the back is where it starts getting glazed. So you can use this for a coaster. You can use this as an underplate for a regular planter because this can have moisture on it without having any problems. Um, so you've got the little Emerson uh, Creek pottery piece, coaster or otherwise for $4 by giving me number 61. $4.61 for the Emerson Creek pottery piece. And the cat mirror number 20 goes to Belinda Carroll. So thank you, Belinda, for picking up another piece. That should add like virtually no weight onto your box that you've already got started. And um, I hope you enjoy it. All right, moving on to the $3 items. So for three bucks, I've got a cocktail glass. I don't know if we've got anybody in the house from Louisiana. Uh, so that's why this is only three bucks, kind of a specialty cocktail piece. I had it in my booth for a little while and in Illinois, people don't particularly care about Louisiana, no offense. So I just pulled it out to make room for some other pieces that I was putting on display and brought it into this for three bucks. It has a lot of the, um, sorry, let's see if I can find a piece of paper to see it a little bit better. And it basically has a lot of images from the area. So you've got the mansions, you know, the antebellum gowns, got a pelican, shape of the state. Uh, that's the dude in front of the church in New Orleans. So like, was that Jackson, I think? What the hell is that? Oh, that's Mardi Gras. Sorry, it looked like that was somebody hanging from a tree. I was very disturbed there for a second. Um, got some floral designs. It's just a really cool, it's all black and white. And then at the top, you've got in gold on both sides, Louisiana. So you got Louisiana one side, Louisiana the other side. Perfect condition, you know, typical old fashioned, double old fashioned size glass. It's three bucks. So $3 for the Louisiana cocktail glass, $3 by giving me number 86. $3.86 for the Louisiana cocktail glass. And it looks like, uh, oh, Swamp Pickers here. There we go, Louisiana's covered in the house. Uh, you probably don't need a glass from Louisiana, but hey, hello, Swamp Picker. Um, Number 61, the Emerson Creek Coaster went to Jenny X. So thanks, Jenny, for picking that up. All right. Next piece I thought was Takahashi when I bought it. It was not, but it does have that same kind of a look. It's a slightly bigger piece than the Takahashi that I had, but I'm making it a little bit of a lower price because there is a little bit of a nick down at the bottom where the uh, barrel, you can even see it's kind of like a barrel style, right at the barrel where it meets the edge. So I don't know if it got like hit on something or got put down hard and just popped a little chip of paint off there. You can't really see it because the pottery glaze underneath it is still white and the glaze is that same color, but it is there. So if you feel it, you definitely know it's there, but it is a cool design. It's kind of like a half whiskey barrel that has been painted. And what's nice is the painted pieces are actually in relief. So, they, it's, they're not lost in the grain work of the barrel. So you've got the petals are all re, you know kind of raised up. It's just kind of a neat, very simple uh, floral design against that. And then you even got like the, all the nail, nail heads and stuff in the trim of the barrel. It's just kind of cool. It does have a, um, a, a label to it from Rubens Originals. That didn't mean anything to me. I couldn't really find much on it. It does have an incised mark of Japan right in the middle with the date stamp of 1980. So you've got the Rubens original stamp and then Japan 1980. So you've got a very nicely parked, my nice piece, a little bit of damage, which normally I wouldn't tell, but because it wouldn't sell it because of the damage, but it's a nice piece. So I just pricing it correctly. So again, we're in the $3 section. So this is three bucks. So $3 for the little, uh, what did I just say is, um, Rubel, what, what was it? Rubens, with the Rubens pottery. $3 by giving me number 19. Rubens pottery piece 19, little barrel style. All right. This, I will admit, if you've watched my sales before, this is every turn. Um, I had this initially, it didn't sell. So I've knocked it about down to three bucks. If we've got anybody from Texas in the house, from San Antonio, uh, Carrie's from Austin, uh, but we've got any San Antonio lovers. It's what we determined during the last time I tried to sell this, a little salsa dish. It's glazed on the center, so you can put something uh, wet on the inside. It's a bisque finish on the outside with kind of the incised marks of the little, you know, Aztecian designs. Uh, it's a souvenir piece because it says San Antonio, Texas, right on there. 
I just really like the looks of this. Uh, we don't remember what I was selling it for the last time, but it didn't sell. So you know what? I'm bringing it back and I'm saying it's three bucks. So $3 for the San Antonio Salsa Bowl, $3 by giving me number 73. $3.73 for the San Antonio Salsa Bowl. All right, next, this is another item I've had multiple times. Again, they come in multiple sizes. It's one of those uh, leaf shaped dishes, just a little pin dish, a little trinket dish, you know, you small keys. You know, this is one of the smaller ones. Uh, again, size wise, it is like five inches side to side and just under five inches tip to tail. So it is a uh, it is a stamped piece uh, from the same place as all the other ones I've had, Orion, China. But what's nice about this one is it's made in occupied Japan. So it's a hand painted piece from Orion, China, made in occupied Japan. It's a very simple dish, very simple design. They're very sweet, very lightweight. I don't know if you can see from here, but it is translucent. I can see my fingers on the other side of the bowl uh, because I've got the light coming at me. So it's a very a lightweight piece of China made in occupied japan and it's only three bucks so three dollars for the orion china dish three dollars by giving me number 11. three dollars number 11 for the orion china dish um so looks like number 19 the barrel style planter went to angela marksbury We'll see if we can get the uh, Huckster Helper to deliver this to you on her way back to see your mom. Uh, number 73, the San Antonio Bowl goes to Kylie Cat S. Excellent. Welcome back, Kylie. Thanks for joining us again. Thanks for picking up another item. So she gets a salsa bowl for $3. All right. Uh, next piece, same thing. I think I've had this in a sale before, uh, before I put it in my booth. Put it in my booth. It didn't sell for $6.95, so I've marked it down to $3.00. It is a Majolica style of uh, what would most likely was a homemade uh, uh, ceramics piece. It has the big sunflower pattern in the middle and these are all uh, embossed or uh, relief patterns. So all the veining is actually raised. Uh, so they're uh, painted out, but they were pressed into the ceramics. So you've got uh, white glaze on the back. For some reason, they did a very uh, glitzy gold pour into the hollow from when it was made is in really good shape. There's no chips, no cracks. There's no, uh, there's no crazing on the front. Um, well, no, I take that back in the green. There's a tiny bit of crazing, but there's quite a bit of crazing on the back. So this definitely has some age to it. Unfortunately, unlike most ceramic pieces, this was not signed. So there's no name, there's no, there's no date or anything. So I'm going to guess this was probably from the eighties, just based on its style. Regardless, I don't remember what I was trying to sell for before. In the booth, it was $6.95. It didn't sell, so now it's 3 bucks. So $3 for the Majolica style tray. $3 by giving me number 16. $3, number 16 for the Majolica style tray. And it looks like number 11, the leaf dish, went to Karen Dondelinger. So thank you, Karen, for adding another item to your box. All right, the next one, this is one of those pieces that if you go to a lot of antique stores, you see these all the time. Um, this one is no different than any of the others. It's a simple milk, milk glass divided dish. I was selling it in the booth for $4.95. It's in great condition. It's got the gold accent beadwork going around the outside. It's all in great condition. They're just fairly common. It is a piece of Fire King. Uh, so it's got the oven Fire King wear number 18 mark on the back. I don't know if there's any way you're going to see that. Um, but it is Fire King. So you've got the Fire King opalescent white milk glass, whatever you whatever they called their version of it. And it's three bucks. So three dollars for the little divided dish. Three bucks by giving me number 83. Three dollars, number 83 for the divided milk glass dish. All right, only a couple more items at the $3 level, and then we're down to two. So we've got $2 level, and then we'll be done. So uh, hopefully try and keep things pretty quick. This ended up being an item that, to be perfectly honest, I was I'd kind of turned it into a project piece because when I bought it, I knew it wasn't correct. I bought this set of milk, uh, salt and pepper shakers, these, these gigantic eggs, 
with little eggs in them. The only relationship is the color of the little eggs is about the same color as the grass underneath. That's a little bit darker, but where the light color is, it's about the same color as these. However, this is not what's supposed to go into this piece. If you've seen these before, and I have sold these before, what's supposed to sit on those little platforms are chickens. So I was hoping to find a pair of chickens, a chick's um, salt and pepper shakers, because again, they're eggs. So you would have chicks coming out of an egg, not more eggs, but whatever. So I picked this up and planned on separating it into, you know, if I ever found this and selling them separately. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sell it the exact same way I got it. These, these eggs gave birth to more eggs. So you've got a special, a special moment uh, in your salt and pepper shaker that you can then, you know, basically we're at the $3 level. The little pair of eggs are worth three bucks by themselves, but basically you're getting this bigger piece. And if you're lucky, you'll be able to find the chicks that fit in there and make this a proper piece. And then you'll have like a $20, $25 set. I just haven't found them. I need to clear out some inventory because I need the space. So the whole set, the pair of eggs plus the cracked eggs that they sit in, the whole thing is three bucks. So $3 for this entire set by giving me number 77. $3, number 77 for the salt and pepper set. All right, it looks like number 16, the Majolica style dish went to Annette Fain. So thank you for picking that up, Annette. And the, I already announced the leaf dish. All right, next item. Okay. Next item I've got is kind of just a little simple glass basket weave iridescent amber glass dish. Um, probably more from the 70s than it is from Depression era. Uh, it's completely smooth in the inside and it's got that basket weave pattern on the outside. You can see it's got the, de the scallop design going all the way around the edge. Uh, it's in really good condition. Did I just feel a chip? No, I did not. Um, so it's in really good condition. It's just a simple little, again, coin dish, key, key bowl, whatever you want to do with it. It's three bucks. So $3 for the little basket weave uh, bowl, $3 by giving me number 81, $3, 81 for the amber iridescent bowl. And it looks like uh, number 77, the egg shakers went to Polly's projects. So thank you for picking those up. All right. Uh, next one, I've had a couple of these in the past. This one was a little bit different. It is a butter press. So it's a tiny little butter press. Um, what's odd and different about this one is the, the outside is the very dark patinaed wood, a dark wood. The inside is a very, very light wood. So I would say that if this has age to it, it probably doesn't have a lot. And it definitely was not something necessarily used much. This was probably more for decorative purposes. So I, I'm selling it just as a decorative piece. It is very sweet. It looks very nice if you just have it sitting like that, or you can hold it with the side so you can actually see the pineapple that you would be pressing into the butter pats. And if you want to knock yourself out and make Martha Stewart look bad, you can do your own. So, you know, you could use this. It looks in great clean condition. It's a very nice shellacked wood that I think would be easy enough to clean and you're not, you know, carrying all the bacteria from piece to piece. So you've got the little uh, $3 butter pat, uh, butter, pot, butter, butter pat press. So $3 for the little wooden piece and it's the number three. $3, number three for the little wooden butter pat. And the last piece is an uh, item. I used to have part of a set and then I had uh, some takers on the salt and pepper shakers that went with it and it left this dish all by itself. So it's a really pretty piece of porcelain. It's an oval dish. It is alt, um, it's CT alt Wasser. So I think this is Austrian, China. It has a yellow iris painted in the middle of a brown ground. Um, it does have handwriting uh, of numbers off to the side that I do not, uh, was not able to trace them into anything, but you can see the logo there um, of the porcelain maker uh, that I believe when I had looked this up when I first got it, that that made it Austrian. 
uh, CT Altwasser is the porcelain maker. It is a simple oval dish. It's an absolutely perfect condition, brown and yellow design on the inside, white glaze porcelain on the outside, perfect condition, no chips, no cracks, a nice gold trim all the way around it. It is $3. So we're in the $3 set, $3 for the little porcelain dish by giving me number 96. $3.96 for the porcelain oval dish. And it looks like the uh, butter press went to Debbie Vitali. So thank you, Debbie, for picking up a small item. And it looks like that might be the only thing you've gotten so far tonight. So it'll be very inexpensive to ship. So uh, congratulations for picking that up. Uh, and now we are on to the $2 bin. Okay, so this is where some of the other items that I've got multiples of um, we're going to start out, I think Nate is here. I'm not sure if he's still here, but we're going to start with Nate's favorite. For those of you who uh, might have seen uh, one of the more infamous sales where I had the opportunity of picking up 250 vintage maxi pads. Uh, poor, poor Nate was the huckster helper of the evening and we ended up selling over 100 of them. Uh, but that means we have over 100 left. So guess what? They're back. So you too can have your own vintage 70s slash 80s guards maxi pad, size number four inch dash 147. These based on the case that they came out of were from a company that did the uh, vending machines at hospitals. So this would have been one of those you would have gotten from a vending machine. Each one of these has one maxi pad inside of it. Um, it just makes for a fun vignette put on the top of your medicine cabinet, put in your medicine cabinet the next time you have guests and see what they say when they come out. Uh, so you never know. So anyway, these are two bucks, $2 each. You can have as many as you want. So if you want more than one, I have over a hundred. So unless you're going to go crazy, uh, just tell me if you want more than one, put that in the chat and let have the huckster helper have another reason to hate me. So see how many of these we sell. They're $2, very lightweight. If you've already bought something, you can add, add many of these into the box with very little weight being added to them. Um, but $2 for the guards vintage maxi pad. And you can add that to your collection by giving me number four, F number four, $2 for the maxi pads. And it looks like number 96, the oval dish went to Polly's project. So thanks Polly for picking up another uh, piece to be added. All right. So from the $3 range, it looks like we did not sell the milk glass dish, the amber iridescent bowl, or the Louisiana cocktail glass. So if anyone was interested in any of those, those are still available for three bucks. And under the $4 range, we still had the um, gold trim, the tall ewer, uh, the little bamboo designed ewer. So that was four bucks. That's what's available from that. All right. So we are again in the $2 range. We've got... The Huckster Helper is is, is uh, busily writing something, so we must have had some takers for the maxi pads. Um, so we'll see what she does to me later tonight. But uh, I bought ice cream, so she really can't complain too much. So that is um, that was number four. All right, so we're going to let her see if we can get caught up a little bit, see if we stop getting uh, people in there. Um, oh, Michelle from Newton's Cupboard, so glad you're here tonight. Um, welcome. And uh, hope you're having fun hanging out and not thinking about anything else. So glad to have you with us. Um, oh, and Barb's here. Thanks, Barb, for joining us again. Uh, missing up some of the people. All right, it looks like she just walked away. So either she got frustrated with you guys or she was done. So uh, we can move on to the next item. So the next one is I had a piece of Fire King earlier. Uh, this one is a piece of Anchor Hocking. So this is an oven proof Anchor Hocking bowl. Um, I am not particularly familiar with anchor hocking and all the different marks. This one is the one that actually has the anchor. So I think that makes it earlier than the AH, which always gets confused with Hazel Atlas. So this one is just the anchor. Um, so I do believe this is a slightly older bowl. I couldn't swear to it. Fact of the matter is it's only two bucks. So the little milk glass uh, uh, anchor or anchor hocking bowl is $2.00 and it is number 79, $2, number 79 for the little uh, milk glass bowl. All right, next item is one that is, is admittedly not particularly old, but basically it comes up as timing. Uh, we just put away all the Christmas decorations and this was one that had been hanging on the tree 
as a bit of a mystery, uh, let's start out with the basics. It is an anniversary ornament for a marriage I'm no longer part of, um, but that's fine. But it was given to us, I believe, by my mother, who seems to have forgotten what year we had gotten married in, because it is a keepsake Hallmark ornament celebration, which has the little, there's little numbers that you can hang from there that celebrate whether it's a 20th anniversary, 25th anniversary, 29th, whether well, 30th anniversary, whatever but it always like a celebratory anniversary. Well, this is dated 2014 and we were married in 1993. So I don't know too many people that celebrate that anniversary. Um, so I'm just selling it. So it's just a simple Hallmark ornament. The little, the little disc things are still in there, the little bag with the multiple versions. It includes charms for 10th, 25th, 40th and 50th. Um, otherwise I guess you just use it as a regular uh, ornament, which is maybe why my mother gave it to me. But again, not married, not celebrating my anniversary, no offense. So it's two bucks, $2 for the Hallmark ornament, anniversary ornament, uh, ornament, 78, number two, $2, number 78 for the Hallmark ornament. And before anyone says anything, the Huckster Helper has plenty of ornaments that she will have from the family passed down to her that she did not need that one. Uh, next item I brought out of the booth, uh, because again, things were getting ripped open, things were being stolen, and I was getting ticked. So these are two sets of uh, playing cards, uh, game cards. Uh, one of them is uh, animal flashcards, 36 educational animal flashcards. And the other one is from Bright Start, Insects and Small Critters. So you've got two boxes of cards, you get the pair of these for two bucks, so a dollar a box for these two different cards. Again, Bright Start and Animals. The boxes did look better than this when I put them in my booth. So they, their boxes are showing a little bit of wear and I did not recount to make sure they're all still there, but they're just flashcards. So you know you can, you, you can work with what's there and most of them you can tell the boxes are full. So it's $2 for the pair. You know, so if you just need some little game to hang out with when the grandkids or kids you know come to visit, $2 for the pair. Uh, so you get both for two bucks for giving me number 97, $2, number 97 for the, the two sets of uh, children's cards. All right, number uh, 79, the milk glass bowl went to Pat Patricia Sandoval. So thank you, Patricia, for picking that up. And number 78, the Hallmark ornament goes to Auntie Christie. So thank you, Auntie Christy, for picking that up. And the flashcards are number 97. All right, this is another item. I've sold a couple of these in sales before. This is ended up being kind of like a little wayward um, belt buckle. Uh, the booth across from me at the Rustic Fox does vintage jewelry, like the, the leather bracelets. Um, so they take the leather from belts and then they have all the belt buckles left over. So I was picking up their belt buckles. This was one that didn't really have a lot of uh, traction in eBay or Etsy for anything to sell online. I felt weird selling it in my booth when I just bought it from them, you know, 10 feet away. So since I can't put it online, I figure I just sell it here for two bucks. So $2 for the very simple, um, but very functional metal belt buckle. Uh, probably ladies belt buckle in a circular design. It's only two bucks. It's a very heavy, um, solid metal, not marked in any way. $2 by giving me number 98. $2, number 98. Number 97, the flashcards went to Judy Reardon. So thank you, Judy, for picking those up. Those should be relatively inexpensive to ship. So you probably can get those first class so there won't be much of a postage issue uh, if that happens to be the only thing you buy this evening. Uh, all right, next item, a souvenir piece. I'm not sure if Fatbird Finds is still on. Uh, this is a small teacup and saucer that is a souvenir piece from Niagara Falls. So you've got a picture of the falls on the front as it turns to the right side, you basically just have the back side of the, of the Niagara Lake. And then on the saucer, you have that little sticker that says Niagara Falls, Canada. And then you also have the drawing of Niagara Falls in the saucer. So this is a miniature size. I don't know if this would qualify as a children's teacup. It might be a little bit big for that. I really think this is really just a souvenir piece. I don't know if this was ever designed to be used as a demi-tasse or any sort of coffee or teacup. Um, it just, it's very nicely 
uh, done. And it is another item that I had had that was made in occupied Japan. Once upon a time, I thought that something marked occupied Japan made something super rare and, and expensive. I'm wrong. It makes them cool and it does make them sellable and it makes it more sellable than if it wasn't made in occupied Japan, but it's still not a huge, a huge price point item. So instead of trying to list it on eBay or Etsy and pay the fees, I'm going to sell it here for two bucks and hopefully somebody will enjoy it. So $2 for the little, the miniature size uh, teacup and saucer from Niagara Falls, $2, but give me number 87. $2.87 for the Niagara Falls belt, uh, teacup and saucer. All right, next item is weird. I, there's really nothing else I can say. Um, happy birthday. It is a happy birthday doll. It is a flat bottom, so it's basically designed to sit up. It has like paper raffia style hair that's orange. It has holding a birthday cake, got a little ribbon tied in a bow around her neck. It's, she's wearing a shawl. And on the back says she is Dolly Graham by Western Union. So it's some bizarre promotional piece that Western Union put out for doing telegrams. They made a Dolly Graham. And I guess this is Dolly Graham is to celebrate and announce a telegram for being a happy, wishing somebody a happy birthday. It's somewhat disturbing. I don't know why her eyes are closed. Um, but it's just, it's just weird enough to be weird. And I just felt that this is something, no offense to anybody who here, but this might be go well in a live sale. So he, she's kind of fun, kind of different, kind of quirky, and she's only two bucks. So $2 for the Dolly Graham by Western Union, $2 for the little doll by giving me number 84, $2 number 84 for the little Dolly Graham doll. All right, there's only two items left. Oh no, three items left. All right, so the next one, since she's now recovered from doing all the maxi pads, we will do the other only other item that I've got multiples of. And this is, if you've done my live sales in the past, I've had these multiple times. This time they're the items that came out of my booth because I had to relabel everything. And I chose to take the $2 Wade Whimsies that I was selling in the booth as a grab bag, just like I do on the live sales. I was selling them in a basket where they were all sealed up. You didn't know what Wade Whimsy you were going to get. Well, I didn't want to remake my labels, so I'm selling them here. So I have a total of eight of these. So if you want a Wade Whimsy, they are in perfect condition. They're absolutely just like all the other Wade Whimsies I've sold. They're most likely an animal. There might be a storybook character. These were sealed up four months ago. I have no idea what's in here. Uh, and I didn't want to have to break them all open. So you will get them just like this. You'll get them in this little pillow box with the two black seals on it, tied up with the original price tag on, which you probably can peel off if you wanted to gift this. It's just something fun. So it's, you know, Wade Whimsy sell for more than $2. So I had the opportunity to pick them up inexpensively. I sell them here for two bucks. You don't know what you're going to get, but you know, hopefully have fun with it and you'll get something fun. I do not believe, I won't swear to it, but because these were all part of the original package that I put into the booth, I do not believe there will be any duplicates. If you end up getting a duplicate, let me know and I'll work something out. I, I, I don't intend to cheat anybody or not make this fun, but I'm, so I'm pretty sure all eight of these are unique. So if you buy two, you're not gonna get a duplicate. If you do, you know, if I, now if I duplicate something you have, that's not really my fault. So this is just for fun. So it's two bucks, but if you've been buying them, you know, they're usually more than that. So $2 for the little Wade Whimsies. I've got eight, the first eight people, and you have to do them one at a time. So if you want two or three, you just need to enter this number as many times as you can until we capture the first eight people. So the first eight people that give me number 65, the first eight people that put in the number 65 will get a Wade Whimsy package just like this. So number 65 is $2 for the Wade Whimsy. The second to last, the penultimate item. I heard a grunt from the House of Tuxter Helper, so that does, that's not a good sign. No, it's great. It's so good. Oh, so good. All right. Well, we definitely have sold all eight, so thank you very much for those of you who picked those up. And again, they're light enough weight that you'll, I'll be able to send them first class mail. So even if you didn't pick up anything else, these shouldn't be that expensive um, to ship. 
Um, but you know, if there's, if we're going long, just what you, we can, if it's something that you want to wait until you buy something else next week, we can figure something out. Um, but I don't like to hold a lot of stuff cause I don't have space. That's the theme of this whole sale. Uh, so anyway, so thank you for the number of people. Um, if a uh, huckster helper can shout out really loudly, the eight people that she sees first. Nope. She's giving it to me. All right. So Sheila Putman, Putman. Barb from Winking Owl, Karen Dondelinger, Liz Sturman, Nettie, Brooke Lagan, Laura Ann. Oh, and I've got something for Laura Ann uh, and uh, Kylie Cat. Excellent. All right. So thank you very much for picking that up. $2 a piece. And you cleared me out of my uh, loose uh, Wade Whimsies from my booth. All right. The penultimate item is another return item. I had him the last time literally like in... July, you know, like right after graduation season ended, uh, nobody wanted the little graduate raccoon. So, you know, my Huckster helper graduates from college this May, but she doesn't want him either. So <laughs> we've got this little uh, porcelain raccoon. It is made in Korea. It is by Russ, Berry and Company number 1091 made in korea it is a little raccoon clutching his diploma wearing his little mortar board so and sitting on a book so super cute just a little decorative you know porcelain um if you like just small objet he would just look cute in a little curio but if you've got a graduate coming up isn't he a cutie and he's only two bucks so two dollars for the little graduate raccoon two dollars by giving me number 75. $2, number 75 for the little graduate raccoon. And for the final item, which just as a warning, if you purchase anything else from me, this can impact the way it ships to you unless you want me to dump it out. No, ignore what I just said. It's already empty. I could have sworn this wasn't empty, which means I'm there's probably liquid somewhere in the bottom of a box somewhere. Oh, well. Um, it is a vintage bottle of hops trade nitro power solvent it is a gun cleaning solvent so it's a little brown bottle it's got a brown paper label on it it's got the hops logo trade nitro powder solvent i said powers powder solvent number nine it's got the trademark and then the big red nine in it um it is from the made in the usa philadelphia it is from 19 Hold on. Nineteen thirty-seven. So the label on the bottom has a copyright date of nineteen thirty-seven. You can see it right there. And then you've got the Frank A. Hop Incorporated, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. No zip code, which in thirty-seven would not have had a zip code. The little, you know, signature, fake signature. It's got the very long directions because you're cleaning a gun. Um, but it's just kind of a cool looking vintage bottle. And if you've got a certain type of industrial design, this would look great. And it does have a screw top to it that's not coming off. So you've got a, you've got a good solid bottle that's going to look great decoratively. And it's only $2. So $2 for the Hops gun cleaning solvent. $2 by giving me number 71. $2.71 for the hops oil. And that is it. Uh, let me go back into the, we had a couple of last items that sold. So let me get back those again. Uh, so the raccoon number 75 went to Karen Dondelinger. So thank you, Karen. We'll add that to your box. Um, number 84, the freaky doll goes to Melody. No comment. Uh, so congratulations, Melody, for picking up the Western Union uh, doll. We already read off who got the Wade Whimsies. Did anyone take any of the maxi pads? Oh, yeah, here we go. Let me go ahead and read off those of the maxi pads, because in case you didn't get anything else, want to make sure you get the ones that you want here. Uh, so Margaret Gwen, 1957, Karen Dondelinger, Carolina Princess, and uh, Four Sandy's Lilacs uh, picked up some maxi pads. So you will all be able to get those. Um, 
Margaret, I think you're the only one that I don't recognize from that. So just make sure you send me anyone who bought from me for the first time this evening. Just make sure you send me your um, uh, shipping information so I can get you an invoice to add the uh, freight cost. And the maxi pads, a lot of these things, um, most of the items I sold tonight with a handful of exceptions were actually relatively lightweight. So even if you did only buy one item, you should be able to get off pretty easily without too much shipping cost because most of them will just go first class. So it doesn't matter uh, where I'm shipping it. You know, if you're not familiar with shipping costs, it makes a very large difference of how far I'm shipping it, how big the box is that I'm shipping and how much it weighs. So just always keep that in mind when you're buying from any reseller. If you are concerned about it or question it, just go straight to the reseller and ask, hey, can I clarify how much it's gonna cost? because I've been shocked at how much I've had to pay to ship items to California, to Las Vegas, Canada is a freaking joke, um, that I've even told people, I'm like, ah, you may not want this because it's kind of expensive. Uh, people can make their own decision, but just always keep that in mind. I am shipping from Chicago, so tend to be somewhat balanced, um, but it's always gonna be cheaper for me to ship to Ohio than it is to ship to Washington State. So anyway, just keep that in mind, uh, but make sure I've got your shipping information so I can get you the proper uh, pricing. So the hops oil bottle also went to Melody. So from the $2 batches, the only thing that looks like it didn't sell was the, yes, it did. Uh, so the Niagara Falls teacup went to Judy uh, Scallet. So thank you, Judy, for picking that up. So the only thing that looks like it didn't sell from the $2 was the belt buckle. Um, so that, and that's fine. Uh, if there's anything that you didn't pick up uh, and if you bought an item and maybe you're thinking, hey, maybe I should add something else, just drop me a note. Let me know, you can ask me what else is left that didn't sell from earlier. A lot of things did sell, but there's a handful of stuff um, that didn't. So be, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, but I wanna thank you all. I did crank through this a little bit faster, so I wasn't following the chat as much. So I do apologize for that. I'm horrible at following the chat anyway but I specifically wanted to get through what is considered a bigger sale for me as quickly as I could. So we did actually finish it up in less than two hours, which was my goal. Uh, and we ended up going through, I think, 60 items. So appreciate you all sticking with me. Uh, pr always appreciate you giving me your time and attention. Hope you have fun. Even if you don't buy anything, you know, you're always welcome to hang out in our chats, become a huckster, huckster heckler, and uh, just have fun hanging out. So again, thank you so much for tonight. If you bought anything, please drop me an email. Uh, and make sure that you catch later tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern, this overstuffed house. Uh, that will be a live sale at 11 p.m. tonight. And then tomorrow, you've got a whole day's worth. Doggone Happy Vintage at 3 p.m. Niche Lady at 4 p.m. Crafty Jackie at 6 p.m. Real Nifty Vintage, which includes a co-host by Barb of Winking Owl Antiques, who had been signed on earlier this evening. They do their shows now at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And then tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern, don't miss Fat Bird Finds. You want to catch them all the time anyway, but tomorrow is a special. They've got the power hour where they will have an hour's worth of special guests, games, and activities. Uh, and they start at 10 p.m. Eastern uh, tomorrow, uh, Friday night. And uh, follow Angela Marksbury's Instagram account uh, for the full week's calendar. She posts out every weekend. So again, thank you so much. Thanks for giving me your time. And thanks for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. Say goodbye, Huckster Helper. Goodbye. Everyone have a great night. Bye-bye.